Hello and good morning. Today we are with Mr. Musa from Pakistan. He is studying at the Charles University in the IT field. So we are going to talk with him the procedure, how he comes here to study, how much is the fees to study at the Charles University, the program, what he is uh, taking nowadays, how much he pays for accommodation, his living expenses, about his part time jobs, and his monthly expenses. So let's start with Musa. Can you please introduce yourself? Hello everyone, I'm Mumin Musa. I'm from Peshawar, Pakistan, and I did my A levels there. And after that, I started applying for universities. Uh, initially, I wasn't planning to come to Europe. Uh, like a lot of people, I was dreaming of going to UK, Canada, or America, but I just applied uh, to some universities in Europe just to be on the safe side. And I received a scholarship at Charles University. And that was my main motivation to come to come to Czech Republic. Yeah, so you said you received a scholarship. That means they offered you some stipend money or they offered you the fees wave off? It was a full tuition waiver based on merit. Merit. Okay. And... From Peshawar, you did A-levels, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so how did you apply for this uh, this program at the Charles University? Is it all online or you needed some consultant? No, I uh, did all of my application process, uh, process completely by myself. And uh, yeah, I think it's not that big of a problem if you can search on internet and find your way. Okay, and for this application, for example, you are in the IT field, what, under what faculty this comes? It's an IT faculty or is something else? In our university, the, it's a faculty of mathematics and physics. So computer science uh, comes under that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, the bachelor courses are offered in Czech language, but they are offering now in English. So did they ask you some special document for nostrification or anything, or it was only internally they nostrified your A-level diplomas? Uh, I think for me, I wasn't required to do it because I had uh, English uh, in my O-levels and I also did SATs. But uh, for people with other uh, school curriculums, I think they do require IELTS or some other kind of English uh, Exactly. Okay. And in your class, how many students there are there are now and from which nationalities mostly? Uh, I think there are around more than 70 students and all over the world. <laughs> okay. And is it mostly from Asia or mostly from Europe? Um, a lot of them are from Ukraine and there are people from Americas, there are people from Asia, Africa, and Europeans as well. Okay, and this, but this program is in completely in English? Yes, this one is English. Okay, and out of 1 to 10, being uh, 10 as the most difficult, how do you rate your uh, program here in Charles University for this IT field? Is it very difficult or mediocre or just easygoing? Uh, so because uh, our program lies under the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, so historically it has been very theoretical and uh, it focuses a lot on theory compared to any other universities for the same computer science program. That's why everybody complains a little bit about the difficulty of this program. So I would say somewhere around eight, nine. <laughs> eight or nine. So it's a quite tough course for a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And normally, how much is the fees per year for this kind of program? Because you are you have a fees waiver, but normally, how much it is? It's uh, uh, around six thousand euros. Six thousand euros per year, yes. Mm -hmm. And this program is for three year, extendable to five. Extendable to seven. Extendable to seven. Okay, so this is for three years and. Uh, this application you did it online and how much was the fees for the application it it was 800 crowns uh, so that would be around let's say about 30 or 40 yeah euros 30 maybe. 40 euros okay and you paid it online and after that how much days how many days it takes for you 
from them to get you the notification that you have got admission or you are selected so i think the deadline is 30th april and uh, they would give you a decision by june okay this uh, and then you start your semester in september yes okay. so how after that they must have sent you some original document let's say for uh, your admission and your accommodation letter something like this so you have to apply for visa so what was your procedure for visa um so they sent me my admission document and uh, uh my accommodation contract from the dormitory i'm supposed to live in and confirmation of studies and apart from that the documents uh, that are like say uh, from another school curriculum they have to be nostrificated as well um so in pakistan it's uh, done through a uh, foreign ministry and it, then when uh, you have to take a, an appointment at the check embassy to verify the documents the first appointment is just to verify all the documents and to translate the documents from english to check and then the second appointment is for the visa so once you are ready with all the prepared documents you can apply for the visa Okay. so you had the admission letter you had the accommodation letter after that you did some um, um let's say the attestation of your degrees from let's say your a levels or high school whatever you have from mm -hmm. the foreign office you get yeah. it super legalized from the embassy yeah and but in this whole process the equivalency the nostrification of your high school was done by charles university internally they didn't ask you to do it uh, because in most of the cases they said you have to go to the government office for notification because many universities cannot do it so they did it something internally for you um i uh, so because my a levels is the, uh, sponsored by cambridge university so okay. it's already verified by them so i contacted the administration of charles university that they can contact uh, the okay. people at Char cambridge university to verify my uh, results from there and okay yeah i think it was something internal between them okay and there is any extra fees you paid for it because mostly there is a fees of 3000 crowns but if it is in their uh, mou has been sound, signed with this one let's say with cambridge if they have it then there is no fees so i don't know did they take any fees from you uh, i did pay fees for super legalization of no, my so documents for notification to the charles university you didn't pay anything else no. for it. okay because most of the cases uh they have to pay around 3000 crowns for this purpose but if you have the degree from anywhere from the europe or let's say maybe uk was inside it this can be also counted so that means that process you did it well because of your o level and a level mm -hmm. so you applied for your uh, visa let's say in june or july in april no in april you got oh, your uh, approval yeah, yeah um it was uh, july july and how much time it took for it like let's say one month or two months or three months um surprisingly it took really fast for me it only took 26 days but i had uh, classmates that were waiting for six months and the yes. semester had already started <laughs> okay. okay so this is there is a lot of uh, factors involved in it let's say it's because you are from charles university and there is some document that your fees has been waived off it makes it uh, you in a better condition to get the visa and then there are some personal checkings as well but i hope it was okay and you got it and well on time 26 days really good mm -hmm. and uh, did you attach any bank statement with it yeah okay and how Just much to, was it you showed it was around uh, 10 lakh rupees and like be let's say around 5000 euros at that time maybe like i had to show that uh for my first year uh, that i'm going to spend here i have enough funds to support that year okay and uh, other than this you need a medical certificate i think uh medical insurance from a uh, company pvzp uh, which is okay. based here in czech republic okay but in for the appointment or for the visa application also do you need a medical checkup to give them uh no but i think you do need a police 
clearance certificate. certificate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's an easy one. To, and you translate it and then you super exactly. realize it. Yeah. Okay. So now after that, you came over here to the Charles University. So you have to come to accommodation. So how much is your accommodation and how it is? And again, out of one to 10, 10 being the worst, how do you rate your accommodation? I think for the price, it's uh, worth it <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because Prague is an expensive city. Okay. And I think my accommodation really don't profit much from how much I pay. <laughs> okay. And yeah, how much you pay every month for it? For a single room, I pay 5,200 crowns. And uh, for a double room, you have to pay around 4,600 crowns. So 4,600 it is for when you share it with somebody, yes? Mm -hmm. And 5,200 when you are living alone in a room. Yeah. And the kitchen toilets are separately somewhere. Uh, kitchen and toilet are shared with the flatmate. Okay, so every flat has two rooms. Yeah, like that. So it's a compartment like this, two rooms, and the toilet, bathroom like this. Okay. Yeah. So five thousand two hundred you pay, which is uh, very good because most of the time student cannot even find a space, uh, even the shared one. So it's good enough for. So out of one to ten, how do you rate it? One being the best. <laughs> I mean, for a dormitory and considering the price, I would rate it around six or seven. Seven, sure. seven is a good one. Okay, that's very good. Yeah. And how much is your monthly expense here? I, I'm assuming that you are a, a moderate spender. I don't mm -hmm. know, maybe you are spend a lot. I don't know, but let's consider you are a moderate spender. So how much is your um, monthly expense? I think on average, uh, what I have noticed from other students as well, 12,000 crowns is a good amount to have a good living here. So 12,000 crowns and it includes your accommodation money or accommodation is separate? It includes the accommodation money. So let's say like 7,000, let's say seven or 8,000 if you have, you can spend a month easily in Prague. Uh, not easily, but if you spend the money consciously. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And how often do you eat outside? Um, I don't often eat outside because I don't really enjoy the <laughs> food here. Okay. And but, do they have their own menza or canteen? Yeah, you... the food from the canteen is really good. Okay, so you eat sometimes from there? Yeah. Okay. And how much is uh, normally one-time meal there? It's around 70, 80 crowns. 70, 80 crowns, so let's say 3 euros, which is very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, do you cook yourself mostly? Or yeah, mo mostly I cook myself. Okay. And uh, what about the jobs? Like, do you search for some job? Did you do any job or are you planning for it? Uh, I really want to find a job, but I'm struggling to find one because uh, I think it's much easier to find a job if you speak Czech. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, uh, I don't know if uh, it's as easy for English speaking students. So I, so you think the language is a barrier in for you to find a good job? Exactly. Okay. So mostly in, in Prague, there can be a big possibility to find part time jobs, but let's say uh, still limited because if you speak the language, of course, there are more possibilities. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice for the newcomers when students are coming here? Do you advise them to come to Czech Republic or not? And what would be your advice if somebody is coming? I personally uh, suggest to a lot of my friends to stop uh, having the dreams about uh, America and the uh, UK and Canada because I don't think it's worth the time, the effort and the money. Uh, they, I think most students should focus on applying to Europe and uh, it's cheaper as well and the best option would be to um, do a language program like if someone wants to go to germany they should uh, have a b2 certificate in german or if they want to come to czech republic they should get a b2 certificate in czech and that way it would be much easier for them to study here for free and find a job okay and now the last uh, few questions for you uh, what is your best 
feeling of being in Czech Republic and what is the worst one? Like how you decide like something good, what happens to you in Czech Republic and what you think is really worst or you really want that to be improved? Well, I think the good things about here is uh, it's a free society. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can practice, do whatever you want. Uh, the people are nice. Uh, I don't know if some people uh, hate to tell the complaints about Czech people that they are a bit xenophobic, but personally, I haven't uh, had any experience like this. I think Czech people are really nice. Okay. Um, the only bad thing here would be about food. I don't really like the food here. Okay. <laughs> and what about the language? Yeah, the language is definitely hard to learn. Okay. And, and are uh, you taking here, some? Yes. Uh, here in Europe, there's also this a mindset of uh, avoiding English everywhere. I don't think Europeans are a big fan of English speakers. And are you working to learn the language? Like, are you going for some professional course or you are just thinking that it will come by time? I'm uh, taking uh, uh, the course offered every semester by my uh, faculty. Okay. But I'm not taking any specialized course in Czech. Okay, Musa, thank you very much. It's very nice for you to join the podcast and give us some information about your life here in Czech Republic. And if we have any questions, we can always uh, write it under the video. And uh, if you have time, you can reply them. So thank you very much and hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot. It was very nice talking to you.